again. As you may note, the deformation of the Blendwick Mesh Deform Cage delivers very good results without the need of having any extra deformation technique. Even in extreme poses, the deformation is pretty consistent. See that even the shoulders, which normally are very difficult areas, are deforming well without any additional work on them, just using the out-of-the-box deformation. You don't see intersections or joints collapsing or anything like that. Nevertheless, if you want to go deeper into deformation, you may want certain details to be modeled by hand. So that's when shape keys come on the scene. And here's another good aspect of mesh deform, and that is that, as it is a very low polygon mesh, doing shape keys on it is very easy, much easier than if you were to add shape keys to the characters model. So, this is the list of bones that Blendrig uses in each part of the body for when you want to drive a shape key with the transformation of a bone. So keep that list in mind, cause we'll use it right now. The first area I want to correct is the thigh joint when it goes up. For doing this I'm going to select the mesh deform cage and I'm going to add a shape key to it. I'm going to name the shape key thigh up L. And now I'm going to open a new window with the graph editor and the drivers mode. So I'm going to right click on the value of the shape key and I'm going to click on add driver. Now I'm going to set the driver to maximum value and then in the variable it is alright that the option is transform channel cause we want the driver to activate when we move a bone. I'm going to select Blendrick biped as the object and now I'm going to look for which rotation axis is the one that I need to activate the driver. So here I see that the leg goes up on the x-axis, so I'm going to select the bone that has to be taken into account for calculating this driver, which is thigh driver L. And I'm going to put it in local space, because I want transformation and also constraints to be taken into account, and I'm going to set it to x rotation. So this means that the driver will look for the x rotation of this bone to activate. Now, if you check the show debug info, you will notice that Blender is exposing the current rotation of the bone that we have selected in the driver. In this case, thigh driver L. So, that number, minus 1.591, is the rotation of the thigh driver L bone in radians. And in this rotation value, we want the driver to have a value of 1, so that the shape key is fully active when the leg is rotated in this amount. So, what I usually do is to add a generator modifier, and in the X field, I do 1 divided the driver value that appears in the show debug info. And that number will result in the driver to have a value of 1 with the current rotation. So that's a nice trick to speed up the process sometimes. So now when the leg is in this position, you see that the driver has a value of 1. And if I bring the leg down, you see that the value decreases. So the value of this shape key will now change according to the rotation of the leg. Finally, with the rig in this pose, I'm going to enter edit mode and I'm going to model the shape key to improve the formation in this area. When doing these shape keys, I will make sure that the X mirror option is off, because I just want to edit one side of the model. Now that I'm satisfied with how the formation is looking there, I'm going to copy this shape key to the other side. So, with the shape key selected, I'm going to press the pin button, and that will show me the shape key in its full extent, regardless of what the current value of the driver is. If I press New Shape from Mix, this will create an exact duplicate of the current shape key, and I'll name this duplicate Thigh Up R. 
After that, I'm going to press mirror shape key with the topology option, and the result is that the whole deformation is mirrored onto the other side. So now I'll copy the left shape key driver and I'll paste it on the right shape key. And instead of having thigh driver L, we have to select thigh driver R. So you can see that now we have the same corrective shape key, but on the right side. And also driven by the bone on the right. Another place where I didn't like deformation much was in the shoulder when the arm goes down. So I'm going to add a new shape key and I will call it arm down L. And I'll copy one of the drivers that I had already created, but in this new driver, I'll select the bone called arm driver L. So now I'll select one of the bones from the arm and I'll put the transformation orientation to normal so that I can see the correct axis. And here I see that it is the Z rotation. So now I go back to the driver and I select the Z rotation for this driver. And you see that the driver value in the show debug info has changed to the Z rotation value, which is now minus 1.009. So in the generator modifier, I'll do 1 divided minus 1.009. And that way the driver will have a value of 1 in this position of the arm. So now I'll update the driver and I can go into edit mode and edit the shape key. So here is how the new shape key looks. And you can notice the difference between one shoulder and the other. Now I'm going to pin the shape key. I'm going to do new shape key for mix. I'll call it arm down R. Then I'll mirror the shape key. I turn off the pinning option. And finally I'll copy the driver from the left shape key to the right shape key. So in this new shape key we change the bone to arm driver R. And as you see in the debug information, the driver value is now positive. This means that the arm driver R bone is rotating in the Z positive direction. So the number in the generator modifier has to be positive also. Therefore we just make that number positive. And now both shoulders are working with their corresponding shape keys. The last remaining deformation that I wanted to correct was on the elbows. You see that when the elbow rotates, the elbow shape kind of pinches at the end. So I'll correct that with a shape key. I'll add a new shape key and I'll call it forearm up L. So I'm going to copy one of the drivers and I'll paste it in this new shape key. And I'll change the bone of the driver to forearm FK L. By selecting the forearm bone, I can see that the rotation axis would be the x-axis. So now I changed the transform channel to x-rotation, and the debug information now says that the value is 2, so I do 1 divided 2, and that is 0.5. Now I can model the shape key. So now I'll go once again through the mirroring process. So I'll pin the shape key, I'll duplicate it with new shape from mix, I'll call it forearm up R, I'll mirror the shape key, then I'll turn off the pinning option, and I'll copy the left shape key driver to this new shape key. In the new driver I'll change the bone to forearm FKR, and as you can see now, the shape key is working on the other side of the character too. In this case the rotation value of the bone is also positive, so there is no need to change the value of the generator modifier. 
And by doing this, we have finished with the fine tuning of the body deformation. In the next chapter, we'll start with the weight painting of the hands and the face of the character. So, keep up the good work! Mm -hmm.